Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. No flashy intros or anything today. I'll just try and get on with it. Um, I'm back on my feet, although strictly speaking I will say foot rather than feet. Um, I can just about put my weight on my ankle now standing, but I'd prefer to be sitting and not have my weight on it. And it's painful to walk on the, <laughs> what I call the back foot. So you put your foot forward to walk, and then you put, as you put your other foot forward, the first foot bends, and that's when it hurts. So walking's not comfortable, and I'm doing it in shuffles. You know, the good foot forward, and um, the other one dragging behind. <laughs> uh. Anyway, at least I'm up and about. Yesterday wasn't, wasn't too clever at all, uh, as was the rest of Sunday. So, Everything in Bloom on the 8th got completely forgotten last month. It just, it just slipped my mind, you know. <laughs> Other things were being thought of. But um, we'll give it a go today. Um, the light's not too bad. It's not a sunny day, but um, it's like bright cloudy. Um, so we'll, we'll see what we can do anyway, see what we can focus on. And we'll shuffle around carefully so that we don't um, do anything silly. My problem is, is that if, if I get a horrible twang, a bad one or something or other, I'm going to throw my weight off of that foot and try and grab hold of something for balance. And there's a lot of things in here that's a good idea not to grab hold of because they're not very stable. So we'll shuffle around and see what we can do. Um, I'm just going to try and move this for a minute because we've got a couple of nice restrepias to look at. Well, I really need two hands to move this. getting it going. Once it moves, the, the wheels turn and it's fine. It's just getting them to turn at the right angle. Right, that'll do. Right, because down here we've got a couple of restrepias open. We've got this one. Um, that's one of my larger ones. Um, originated in Burnham's quite a long time ago now. Um, has grown on very well. Desperately needs a repot this year. But that's um, Falkenbergi eye and um, they're, they're quite small blooms, um, and, and I would say more normal for Restrepia species. Um, and then this one up here has got uh, quite a few blooms on it as well. I've forgotten what that one is. Uh, that is Sanguinea, uh, with A in quotes afterwards, so I think it's one of Burnham's own. Um, but these are lovely blooms, a lovely rich colour, um, bigger than the Falkenbergi eye, but I would still say not, not large blooms as Restrepias go. But they're not a bad size, not bad at all. Um, this is the one that has the largest blooms. <laughs> and it's actually got one out. I didn't see that, there's one lurking round the back. Now you can sort of see in comparison just how large these are, because they're next to that one. Yeah, the, these are large blooms, and that's um, Aulissier, Eric Young Foundation Cross. Very attractive. Oh, come on, don't overbalance. We don't want to do that. And then we've got the Mazda Valia that's out, no ID, just a hybrid. And this, for some reason, I don't know what it's going to do on this camera, but on my DSLR, this will not photograph. It's, it's, every time I try and take a picture of this, it appears to be in full sun that washes all the colour out of it. And so I haven't got a decent photo of this yet. <laughs> Not a large bloom, but the, the colours are very attractive, colours and patterning. And it's a good uniform shape. It's got the, you know, the classic three points, um, all separated as well, because some of the Mazda Valley has actually crossed their, crossed their tails over. Um, some people like that, I'm not so keen. Um, I'm just out of the corner of my eye. I've got a feeling we've got a trapped spike there on the... I'll look into that. I won't do it now because I've one-handed and that would have been left-handed. And then we've got the twinkle rack. <laughs> um, tiny twinkle. Um, not done as well as far as blooms are concerned this year. Um, it needs coming out of that moss. It's old moss and it's tired. 
and I don't think it had such, such a good growing season last year. I mean, I think last year we had about a dozen spikes and I've got four this year. So it's gone downhill. So it needs revitalizing, but nonetheless, the fragrance on this is powerful. Um, and then the uh, cinnamon, this is having trouble because we've got blood, blood blast, <laughs> bud blast on this spike. The only one that's actually bloomed and the other two spikes have totally blasted so we've got to look into that but um, again the, the the cinnamon version of the twinkle has a slightly chocolatey um, sort of fragrance to it a bit more like Shari baby and then um, you know, which way round are these I actually got two that are very similar uh, I think this is the cross come on let go yeah, that's the cross. That's um, Siku Marguerite, um, uh, one of the clones of that one. And that, that comes out with a fragrance very close to Soto Anum. And the blooms do look quite like Soto Anum. And again, only one spike this year. So all these twinkles need looking into. And this is something that's a trifle worrying. This moss has got mould on it surface mold it's not dangerous it's not going to take the plant down or anything but my tray of moss was covered in that the other day i hadn't noticed it um, i went to put some water in the tray and it had like frost on it and i gave it a spray with my um, fungicide and it cleared it completely so that's all this needs but again th this one's planted with too much moss really it stays wet too long um, so that's the red fantasy, that one. So as I said, all these twinkles need looking at, looking at and sorting out. And then we've got our um, Dancing Lady Oncidium. This is Sweet Sugar. It's not an Oncidium anymore. It's had a name change. It's been put into another, another sort of uh, genera now. One of these newer made up ones. <laughs> um, well, if you think about it, the Oncidium genus has got rather a lot of... Um, ones in it if you see what I mean and they're trying to break them up a bit so that's uh, I forget what it's called but um, not strictly speaking an oncidium anymore but it is in my book you know it, it ha had been an oncidium since the cross was first done and registered so you know can stay as an oncidium as far as I'm concerned and then we've got the yellow twinkle and again this one was failing badly so Although it hasn't got a lot of blooms this year, the plant itself isn't doing so bad. The, you know, this growth is a nice plump one, and this is not a bad spike. Um, again, I would suggest my tiny twinkle and my yellow twinkle are by far the most fragrant. Um, <laughs> it might be just because they've got more blooms than any of the others. <laughs> That's remotely possible. Um, but yeah, um, I, I do like the twinkles, you know, they're, um, yeah. under normal circumstances, they're pretty easy to look after. They bloom pretty well, you know. And then we've got this one. Some people are still out on their fence as to uh, what's this called, what this is called. I'm reasonably happy that I've actually got um, Ornithorhynchum, Oncidium Ornithorhynchum, the real thing. But um, I could be wrong. There are a few... Um, it's got a synonym actually, Pyramidale, and um, if you look those two up separately, first of all when you look up um, Ornithorhynchum you'll get Sotoannum most of the time, the pink one, <laughs> which it isn't, um, but if you do find pictures of this and you find pictures of Pyramidale, they're not, they don't look quite the same to me, and yet if one's a synonym of the other, in, to all intents and purposes, it's the same plant, same species. Now, I'm not so sure. <laughs> anyway, that's that rack. And then um, all the stuff around here is not in bloom. <laughs> We've got some buds on one of the dendrobiums over there that's they're swelling up nicely, so they'll be open soon, I suspect. So there's nothing coming around here. The zygos aren't open yet, so we're still waiting on them. So we're sort of round to the display area now, and um, a lot of these have been open some considerable time now. They're going to go soon. Um, the Odontoglossum type, um, its first spike is down to three blooms. Um, its second little 
mini spike down here um, has still got all the blooms that it started with, all three of them. <laughs> um, and, and that's the colour it opens as. It's, it's a creamy, creamy, almost yellowy colour, especially the lip. It has a yellow tinge to it. Um, but then it fades. It changes colour as it gets older and the, the creamy yellow turns to virtually white and the, and the yellow on the lip turns to white or a very, very pale pinkish white. So it does, you know, you'd, you'd, if, if I showed these separately, you would think they were two similar but different plants, but they are one and the same. And then we've got the nice bright red um, Cheyenne, although that's a trade name, I believe. Is that the right way round? Yes, it is. <laughs> so I've, got, I've only got a couple here. And I'm getting distracted here because I've got my eye on the bird table out of the corner of my eye because um, we've had some visitors. Um, I filmed the starling, that was the first guest to arrive. Um, in the time I've been watching they haven't been back, which I'm surprised at. So there must be plenty of food elsewhere. Um, I had a robin uh, yesterday morning while I was trying to balance and get myself a coffee sorted out. And as I spotted it, I thought, I, can I hobble and get the camera and get back before it flies away? And in the end, I didn't. And it was a good job I didn't because at that point, a second robin appeared and they decided it was better to have a fight than actually feed. And then they both flew off. <laughs> but that's robins for you. They are quite aggressive. And this morning, while I was having my breakfast, the nuthatch actually landed on the bird table and instantly flew off. So it, it didn't peck at anything. So it may not yet know there's food there. But it, it came to check out the bird table. So that's what we've had so far that I've seen. There, there could be other things. I'm surprised the sparrows haven't found it. Um, anyway, so and then we've got my um, hiding in, in amongst the purple is some purple. <laughs> And that is my Tahitian Dancer. Um, look at the difference in the colour. This, this spike's been open some time and this one's just opening. Look at the depth of the purple on the recently opened blooms compared with those that have been open a while. And I quite like blooms that do this colour changing, especially when you've got multiple spikes that open at slightly different times. Because in a crowded area like this, it almost looks like you've got more plants than you have. And then we've got this one with the large um, blousy blooms, as I call them. Um, and I like this a lot. I do believe there's another spike. Yeah, there's another spike with one bloom to come. Um, now this is, it's got no name. It was, it was just Cambria on the label. Um, it's no fragrance, only, only a sort of, you know, a, a sort of planty type smell. It's not a fragrance as such. Um, and this is the one that, it didn't grow right. It, it pushed up a new growth and the growth split into two. And those two growths sort of grew on, but didn't grow many new roots. So they got a bit of concertina leaf, leaf going on um, as a consequence of not hydrating properly. You can see here and here. Um, and hopefully those two strange new growths, the single growth that split into two, will both produce a new growth this time round and they'll be normal. And then we should get decent roots. Because it hasn't got a very good root system actually, <laughs> but it's surviving. Um, and then we've got my um, wildcat. Um, these, these blooms are fading quite badly now because the, the, the red is, is starting to take on a brownish tinge. So these opened relatively close together so I'm gonna, I've got a feeling we're going to have a mass bloom drop soon. <laughs> I'll come in one morning and half of them will be on the floor. or all tangled up in the plants and everything. So, but that's been out a very, very long time. Well pleased with that. Um, the gap on the spike, according to others, was uh, when we had the real heat, um, it had a period where it probably wasn't hydrated as much as it should. Well, we've got a blackbird on the bird table. He obviously doesn't know I'm here. Or oh, she, that's a she. You gonna stay? So I'm freeze I'm frozen at the moment, I'm not moving at all. Oh well. So some birds are finding it. This this is good to see. And once they realise there's food there, 
you know, they'll come back, they'll repeat the visit. And then other birds will think, oh, why, is, why are those birds on that funny looking shape there? Let's go and have a look. But um, yeah, blackbirds and starlings are notorious for making a mess. Instead of just picking up the seed they want to eat, they bash around. So they pick up the seed they want and knock three or four on the floor. And a few seeds dotted around underneath the bird table is not a big deal because some birds will see that seed easier than they would on the table itself. Anyway, distraction. <laughs> yes, so uh, apparently, you know, when I had that um, hot spell, there could have been a period where it wasn't hydrated well enough and so the buds didn't form and then it was okay again and the rest of the, the spike formed. So that's that. As I say, I, I can't really zoom in on that blackbird because it's hiding behind that pillar. Um, unless it moves. Which, uh, well, no, it's moved now, it's flown off. <laughs> Short, sweet visit, anyway. And then we've got our Dendrobium phalaenopsis type that had the, the duff name, basically. Um, but um, I'm, I'm not that impressed with these blooms, I must admit. I, that for the size of the plant and the effort of this, you know, that it's put into the cane, I was expecting a bit of a better blooming than that. Um, that's not many blooms, there's only six on that spike. Um, that's better than none, yes. Um, the pretend name that we had with it implied that it, that it would be green. Um, it is, I suppose, the faintest of greens, but it looks more yellowy to me. Um, but it has got a gorgeous colour on the lip. Lovely, lovely deep purple. And slight veining radiating out from the centre. So they're not unattractive by any means, but um, they're not what I was expecting. And for me, for the size of the plant, they're quite small, but nonetheless quite good. And now I don't know what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to get the pot down. We've got one more bloom, which you haven't seen. It's a new one. Um, and I didn't want to film it yesterday, basically because I didn't want to get on my feet and start wandering around. And in addition to that, I thought, well, if I'm filming everything in bloom today, ow, <coughs> um, then um, we'll be seeing it today anyway. <laughs> But my Lelia anceps has just opened, so uh, unfortunately that is virtually touching the roof. So it's impossible to film in its um, in its normal position. Now it's not fully open yet; it's only just opened yesterday, and I suspect that you know the the petals and sepals will move back away from the lip, because at the moment oh, I keep knocking it; it's just not very well balanced today. Um, if I look at it from the side, you can see that everything is pointing forwards. It, 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 it will flatten up a bit with the petals and sepals. But um, this is still one of my favourite favorite Cattleya type blooms. It's, it's just the it's just the coloration on the lip, basically. It's just and it the outline of those colours, you know, the markings. They're just very precise. There's no sort of blurriness about them. I mean, the veining on the inside of the lip is absolutely stunning. So, uh, oh, yeah, and um, the camera is not getting the colour quite right. Um, it's it on the camera. It looks a little pale mauvey, whereas it's it's more of a pinky mauve, lilac. Is that a oh, I, I'm not very good at colours, you know me. Oh, and it's hurting mine. <laughs> uh, right, I think we've. Uh, been on our feet long enough. We can get another coffee and have another sit down. It's my favourite occupation at the moment, sitting down. Um, and it needs to be. Um, I mean, I've got an Orchid Society meeting on Saturday, which I need to be at. And to get there, I need to drive. And to be able to drive, I need the right foot working. You know, that's the accelerator and the brake stuff. Um, we need to have that oper operational. I mean, it's a uh, it's a relatively easy drive, most of it's motorway and dual carriageway. So, you know, once you once you get on there, there's no gear changing, no braking, you just drive along with the flow of the traffic until it's time to come off, you know, so it's a relatively easy drive. But uh, yeah, that's Saturday afternoon. I've got a feeling I'm gonna have to miss a rugby match for that. Well, it better not be England. <laughs> 
Uh, yes, that was a blessing on Sunday, having the the uh, Winter Olympics and some rugby on the TV, so that I could sit there with me uh, <laughs> with me foot resting and not and not think that I'm wasting my time. Because at least there was something that I, I would have normally have watched that anyway. Um, uh, my business with the um, the bonsai. Um, about going to collect some more trees and things has sparked off some interest from some people. Um, now I do have a separate startup and everything for actual bonsai videos. I was going to do it as a separate channel but um, I don't really see any point um, in starting a brand new channel. Um, first of all nobody would know it's there you know, I'd, I'd be literally starting it from scratch. And, we, and we, those of you who've started an Orchid channel over the last year or two know how difficult it is to get up off the ground and get moving. So I'm not going to do it as a separate channel, but it does have a completely different startup, different music and, um, you know, different picture. It, it, it doesn't look anything like the Orchid channel at all. And I'll maintain that so that um, we can... Uh, but there'll be some work to do on my existing bonsai this year. Um, at least three of them must be repotted. Four, actually. Four must be repotted. One, because the, the pot's broken. I can show you that. That's my little... Um, can I zoom in on that? Oh. Whoops. Pressing zoom in rather than zoom out usually works better. You can see the pot's broken there. And unfortunately, that's the escape for, for water. When I try and water it, the water runs off before it gets a chance to soak into the pot. Um, so that one's got it. That one hasn't been repotted since I got it. That's about eight years now. Because I was going to give it away, um, I didn't bother repotting it. And then I didn't give it away. I kept it. Um, so it de that desperately needs a repot. The beech tree next to it will be okay for another year. My two maple ow, my two maples there, um, as bonsai they're still in their infancy, they haven't got a good shape yet, but the, they'll get a better shape um, from now on because they've got light all round them, whereas they used to be on a shelf on some staging with darkness behind them on one side, shaded by other things. So they always grew away from that area so one side of them was growing quite well and the other side wasn't and they ended up a bit two-dimensional so they should start shooting out in all directions from now on so those two won't need a repot um, the ones down on the chairs that got plonked there which is my oh so I'm forgetting which way this flipping zoom works my horn beam um, whoops with its nice substantial trunk and everything. That desperately needs a repot because it's holding water. It, it's soggy, um, so it's not draining properly. So that, that's got to be done for that reason. And my conifer needs doing simply because it hasn't been done for ages. And I'd like to get it in a slightly bigger pot so that there's a little bit more um, root room for it. Um, because although I've got the basic shape of that sorted out, so I keep forgetting to... I'm looking at the tree instead of uh, what the camera's doing. <laughs> Not the best of ideas. Um, yeah, uh, it's got its basic shape, but I don't want it to slow down yet, which it will now do. Um, I, I want to put some vigour in there to get an awful lot of back budding and thicken up all of those... Um, layers and actually thicken the whole thing up to make it look much nicer basically to do that it needs a bit more vigor in the root area so refresh the media and a slightly bigger pot and that'll push the tree on so we'll do that one and then my very good maple the one that's on the decking I don't know whether i can zoom in on that that has got to be repotted that weighs a ton it's it's just mud it's holding water so badly it's not draining. So, um, you know, once, once the buds burst on the maples, um, I'm keeping my eye on them because it won't be long now. You just literally look at the buds and suddenly they will start to move. And as soon as that happens, if you're going to repot a maple, that's the time to do it when the sap rises and starts pushing the buds. It's a 
on deciduous trees like that it's a nice concept because um, the reason they're deciduous that and you get that nice autumn color on a lot of the trees is they withdraw the goodness including the chlorophyll and that back into the tree which means there's no green left in the leaves which is why they go nice autumn colors and that goodness is taken down into the tree um, you know into the base of the tree and into the root area the thick air thick roots and that and, and that's where it lives for the winter and then all of that sap and sugars and things rises up with the increasing day lengths and you know it's usually triggered by light um, and slightly warmer day times as well and as that comes up through the tree the roots aren't doing much yet because there's no leaves yet so as the buds start to move all that goodness has moved out of the base area so disturbing the roots isn't quite such an upset for the tree because the roots aren't doing much if you see what I mean and the goodness has moved out of that area so any damage you do doesn't matter so much and then of course as soon as the leaves open the tree will start feeding itself again and the roots will push yeah so that, that's the sort of cycle for the deciduous trees anyway so uh, yeah so um, adding a couple more trees is not going to be a big deal and I'm hoping I mean those bonsai were only put on those chairs temporarily because I didn't want to put them on the ground um, I'm thinking of actually getting some individual stands for a, for each tree not all of them but some of them um, turn them into like a little display I mean I can do it with blocks you know alternate blocks have have two blocks like that and then two on top and then perhaps a flat one and then sit the tree on that you know get it a couple of feet up off the ground so but I'll sort something out I mean I might make some wooden ones you know some wooden platform stands but um, the trouble is that they don't last you know, and you have to keep looking after them and coating them up against the weather so Anyway, we shall see. <laughs> and that's not everything in bloom on the 8th. That was tagged on the end. That's in case I don't film again tomorrow. Um, I'm going to have to go out soon. I'm, run, I'm, I'm starting to run low on daily things like bread and milk and stuff. And um, uh, I might have to go to the local shop. Um, <laughs> that's a, it's a big decision then. To go to the local shop is walkable. But is that a good idea to actually walk it? Um, <laughs> whereas it's, it's the height of laziness to get the car out just to do that it really is uh, but we, we shall see um, I've got another resting day for my foot and then we'll see what uh, see what it's like tomorrow see if I can risk a short walk um, I mean a bit of exercise probably would do it some good I always go along the lines that if it twinges a bit but and it's not as painful as it was the day before then a bit of exercise is probably okay however if that exercise is as painful as the day before you're doing it too soon <laughs> that pain is there for a reason it's telling you to stop doing things not carry on so uh, anyway thanks for dropping by sorry we had no flashy bits today i'll do the pop-ups for the names like i normally do that um, that'll that'll do and then i'll see see about what i can do for tomorrow and uh, and so on and um thanks for dropping by um yeah as i say you know injuries are a pain uh, <laughs> yeah literally um but they happen you know i'm grateful that it, it it wasn't as bad as it could have been i mean i could have knocked my head you know i mean i could have broken my wrist or something you know as it happens i twisted my ankle and it didn't break and i didn't bash anything else well caught me elbow but <laughs> uh, that was not enough to even bother mentioning let's put it that way so uh, anyway i uh, see you next time thanks for dropping by and listening to all the waffle as always bye for now <laughs>